So I had a build around request for Bishop of Wings here. So this obviously needs to go in an angel shell. I didn't get any direction other than this. So the submitter dude light left me, left me the idea to push around in whatever direction I wanted to push around. And I decided to go with red, mostly because I think lightning strike and shock are pretty reasonable removal spells right now. So I know we gain, we gain, we gain Aurelia as well, which is nice inside of white red. But I think the cheap removal at the bottom is a lot of the appeal to having red here. I think Chandra as a sweeper at the top end also seems decent. She doesn't kill any of these threats or Bishop on our side of the board. And decks like this tend to struggle against um, against control in my experience. So you'll actually see the full playset of Chandra between the main and the sideboard as a way to hopefully help us pressure out Esper. No black splash for the six drop find angel creature. That might be something we could try if we feel like something's lacking in this, but I think I'd rather just be a little bit more aggressive with history of Benalia. Now, because I'm playing history, I could see tithe taker being wrong. Knight of, uh, of what's it called? Knight of grace is like pretty okay against Esper and it's decent against vampire. So I could see this being better than tithe taker. In fact, maybe I want to make that swap. What does what does chat think? Should we hedge aggro or should we hedge the flash decks? That's basically the thought, right? Which of which of the two do we want to hedge? Maybe we want to hedge aggro more because this card with history loves for some aggressive starts. That's true. We do have this to hedge aggro. Yeah, I'm gonna hedge. I'm gonna hedge flash because I think the rest of our deck kind of hedges aggro pretty well, right? Like we've got three main deck Liras. Let's try it as is. And if we meet an aggro matchup and get kind of beat up, we can we can reassess. Uh, someone asked for the land count. It should be on the stream decker. I believe it's 25 with four temples and two uh, mobilized districts. I mean, I would be happy to play against aggro, right? I think a lot of our deck lines up pretty well against aggro, right? So that, that's a good way to test it. And it's a good thought process too. Like, do I want this card that's good against aggro or good against like the flash and control decks? And it's like, well, if I think the rest of my deck is pretty good against aggro, maybe I'd rather have the hedge for the other thing. We, we've had a great stream today, Nova Chip. I'm having a fantastic Friday. It's been, it's been a lot of fun so far. I think if they attack with this, I'm okay trading this for their 1-1 one, one plus a burn spell, so I'm going to block. Opponent's just like, two mana Horned Turtle, what kind of nonsense is this? Who puts Horned Turtle in their standard deck these days? Strike me, Poppy. I think, I think I'm okay with this exchange. There's a good chance their deck is playing like spectacle cards. So cutting them off of like light up the stage is ideal. Hey, let's go ahead, JW. Yeah, I'm gonna check out Underlords tonight. Who do they have the light up the stage? Gosh, we're so good at this. They are playing the Cavaclaver deck. Okay, sweet. Shalai, Shalai into Lyra if we hit the fifth land on time should be real good. Oh no. Temple of Tilt, Temple of Tilt. Do 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 beep beep beep. That's fine, we're at 17.
they have to, they have a tough choice here. They want the Scorcher, they want the, uh, the Calvulicane. Hey, what's going on, Merchick? Yeah, we're gonna, gonna run late tonight. It's been a while, so it's been a really long one. Like to hit some of the people who can't watch during the day on occasion. Where were you? Where were you this turn, basic planes? Where were you this turn? Hey, Blix, thanks for the prime support. I appreciate it. Welcome. Thanks for dropping your support off again this month. And to any uh, of my regulars who mostly watch on YouTube that are here live for the first time in a while, I appreciate all the folks that support that can't always catch live. This is our first match with this Angels deck. Far from our first match of the day, but first match with the Angels deck. We're just looking for more angels at this point. This might this might be a concession all on its all on our own, just because we've got Shalai protecting her. And like this makes things that have to attack, which is real awkward for them. Thanks, Han Solo. Yeah, past past just the website, the front page of the YouTube channel has a lot of playlists too. Hey, Blue Noser. Hope you have a good time. This is this is not that like lag or like miss like I'm sitting here like clicking on it and it wasn't actually picking up Lyra, which is weird. I guess they technically netted damage on that attack, huh? This gives vigilance, right? What if I told you my Doom Angel was going to become even scarier? Every opportunity. She has hexproof. You can't click on her. Touche. Casual, casual 18 point swing. Oh, you know what? Are there honor guards in the sideboard of this deck? I don't remember. Let's let's find out. If there's not Takatlis in the sideboard of this deck, I need to fix that after this. You know, it's funny. I was building this sideboard and felt like I had too many slots. I just like shoved in bindings and demystifies. There's no honor guards in this sideboard. Oh, I didn't put any, I didn't put any of the, the white hate card in here either, did I? The exile target red or black creature planeswalker. I should get some of those in here too, probably. Gosh, Takatli is pretty good against Flash too, isn't it? Have I played Is It Phoenix in Modern? We definitely have at some point. I don't remember how recently though. I don't, I don't remember how recently. I honestly wouldn't be too surprised, Oms, if we got something similar to Lyra in the fall. Like, having some big top-end angel bomb is similar to, like, having a big top-end dragon bomb, which is, like, something that always exists in some way in standard a lot of the time. This hand's great. Hey, Spain Chick. Welcome to Hoaglandia. Good to have you here in chat. Yeah, I think the, the problem with a card like Goblin Motivator, Kaisen, is that while you're definitely right that it's good with a few of the things that we're playing, the individual card quality on it in general is kind of low. So that means, like, when our good cards get killed, we're just left with lower quality cards if we're playing something like that. This card is terrifying. This, this might actually be one of the best red cards out of the new set. It's very strong. 
I'm extra sad that... Another reason I'm sad they're not giving us back the old sets is I really wanted to play Glory Banger and uh, the new one together. Just like in a, in a now in a now kiss kind of way. Like just just like eight five drop dragons was sounded like my jam. I'm in danger. I'm in danger. I probably shouldn't have attacked with this last turn. The more the messier. The more the messier. I swear I swear to God. These planeswalkers are just parents. The more, the more, the messier. Yep, that's how my kids work when they have people, when they have other kids over. Why can't I click you? All right, if we get this off the table, we might be in route to stabilization here. To hit our land drop so we can start giving them a history lesson. We're taking four inside of combat here. Taking six. It's so random. So I can shock this plus deploy a tithe taker next turn. And I want to shock this because it can't be blocked. So this does two to us because it triggers this and then it's trigger deals one. So we could be dead here, but if we don't die this turn, I get to deploy Shale Shalele. And then Shalele gives us Hexproof, which gives us a lot of time to close. This wasn't happening at all today, and now it's just happening every combat step. Shalele does not, unfortunately, stop this. Oh. Oh, we killed my creature. That feels like it bodes well for me. Maybe I'm supposed to play Aurelia there. This trades with Spitfire though, but this would bounce. Acolyte of Flame is really scary. Would Glory Banger be able to exert if he was flooped by a pig? Man, magic jargon is just like, could you imagine someone hearing, hearing that sentence out of context? Can Glory Banger exert when it's flooped by a pig? I don't think it can, because I'm pretty sure exert happens when you declare it as an attacker. And the way it's put into play, it's not being actually declared as an attacker. Easy, easy game. All right, I think the aggro matchups with this is probably pretty reasonable. All right, Takatli's and the Exile spell. Let's do that real quick. Yeah, maybe I'll restart. Maybe that'll help. Devout Decree. I want at least two of these, I think. And uh, I want at least three Honor Guards. Maybe this is the audio bug replacement. Maybe. Uh, 
I enjoy a wonderful commercial while I restart the client. Don't make your life garbage time. Join us in Hoglandia today by subscribing to Jeff Hogland with Twitch Prime today. God, God bless SSDs and quick load times. Prepare your assets, chat. Prepare, prepare your assets. If you would like that wonderful gentleman to make you an advertisement, I'm told he exists on the website Fiverr. One of my buddies commissioned that. This is a little speculative, but we got like 19 white sources in the deck and we're on the draw, so I'm gonna keep this. Even if we brick for a turn, I have two castable spells, so if we if we hit land land, we've got like a pretty reasonable curve here. The Golos Nib deck was really awesome. I'm actually gonna add it to the website this weekend, I think. The Fluffy K. Thank you for the half a year of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. I missed two points of life. I wasn't sure what I wanted to play there. I was, I was going to, I was going to play this, but on second consideration, they haven't done anything. And I think just putting massive amount of pressure into play here is good. I think I just want to try and run them down. Hey, hey look, we put Takatli on our guard in our sideboard chat. Remember that time we put Takatli on our guard in our sideboard? Pepperidge Farm remembers. I think I want to hold on to this lightning strike. If you board into Kotli, you have to board Bishop out. I mean, you don't have to. You probably should, but you don't have to. My sword is your end. Bishop, Bishop also just isn't very good here, right? Like the the life gain from the bishop and like our things our angels leaving behind something when they die like neither of those effects are super meaningful in this matchup, which is of course why I've drawn three of them. But it is what it is. For folks for folks that haven't seen this one before. They shocked that in. Are we gonna see like a six six come down here? Yikes! Yikes! Woof. It is it is worth noting that if I had played Shalai there, she kind of plays around mass manipulation. That's true. That's true. They can use Shalai's text box. That's a relevant, relevant thing to note. If I had to venture a guess, I would bet this style of matchup is hard for us. We're not quite aggressive enough to really get under what the opponent's doing. And as the, as the game goes long, I think they're definitely a favorite. Is the best way to 
Hutterly is the best way to destroy things. It's a lot of, it's a lot of planeswalkers. Yep, solidly, solidly into garbage time. I agree. Might, it might even be right to have four honor guards in our sideboard here, honestly. Just bring in a little bit more removal for their mana creatures. Just have a little bit of extra reach. Yeah, let's give this a go. Like I said, I would expect I expect these blue green manipulation decks ramp ramp in in traditional magic theory ramp decks, which are decks that accelerate into really big spells, tend to prey on what we refer to as mid range strategies like this. So, generic magic theory suggests that this should be very bad for us. They're going to lightning strike this Takatli on our guard, and I'm going to be incredibly sad, but this is my bed, and I'm going to lie down in it. Don't you, don't you tell me how to live my life. I've said this format's basically modern, chat. All I want is my sideboard card, right? Tristani and Veil, maybe. I feel, I feel like it's not just manipulation that beats us though is part of the issue. Like I feel like the, if, if manipulation was their only thing that was beating us, I would say, yeah, let's play Tristani and Veil. Vale. But like, we also usually can't beat Nyssa and Hydroid Crisis. So it's not, it's not just the specific thing they're doing that we can have counterplay to. It's just like the sum of the whole is very good against us. Scrylands are busted, chat. I don't know how many Scrylands you're playing, but it's probably not enough. Good rule of thumb. All of your mid-range and control decks, if you have on-color Scrylands, should play four. Four is a good, good rule of thumb. Aggro deck should have at least two, I think. Possible to play more, but two's a, two's a good baseline. See, excellent example here. Wasn't mass manipulation that beat us, just not beating this Chandra. He's kind of go over the top plays are just very, very good against what these mid-range decks are able to put up. Like, like we've talked about this format being similar to modern decks like this, you kind of pick and choose what you're going to beat, what you're going to lose to. And in this case, we are strong against an aggressive deck with something like what we're playing here. We're going to have a really hard time against these ramp decks. I don't know what Kaikar is. All the details on how to submit decks can be found here on my website. Generally speaking, if you're looking for me to build something, it's a $25 donation. If you have your own idea to submit, it's a $10 donation. And there's a forum you can fill out to submit a specific list through. Main deck duress. Who hurt you, opponent? What was their name? You can tell me. It's okay. We'll get them. We'll get him. This is this is a justice stream. So Bishop plus Angel isn't quite a combo because this gains four, but this needs you to gain five, and that's obviously very intentional. Like they're they're aware of things like this when they're designing cards, right? Ooh. Our opponent is also a connoisseur of jank. We're gonna get like main deck cry of the Canarium tier and just like curl up in a little ball under my desk and cry. Nope, yep, this is still my life. All right, yep, your turn.
He's trying to non-land at the bottom of this game, right? Yep, just checking. <sighs> Okie doke. So, like, you pick and choose what you want to play around, Kaisian. Like, I said we were going to be upset if they had Cry, because it's, like, the exact perfect card that blows us out. Playing out the Tithe Takers is better in the face of a Sweeper like a Kaya's Wrath. And in my opinion, people are more likely to be playing Kaya's Wrath right now than Cry of the Canarium. In fact, I would argue this is one of the worst cards you can be playing in the format right now. Because a lot of the key, key decks that you need to be sweeping, like Vampires, is able to get their stuff past two toughness. Um, Nissa lands and the elemental ramp creature have more than two toughness so I think this misses a lot of cards right now and obviously it's very easy to like look back with hindsight being 2020 and go oh I know they have a cry so I should play around the cry and I think I think e you can't really make a good argument for this is a main deck card that I should be playing around right now and like obviously my opponent's playing a bit of a brew so they could be playing obviously whatever they want but I think in in general, this is not a card. Uh, the Cry is not a card I'm playing around out of most main decks right now. Yeah, Clarion Clarion lines up better into the creatures that are seeing played right now. It tends to be easier to cast too. Playing playing the second Tide Figure out into that is fine. Say leave one ones behind. Robert Bocher, thank you for the brand new Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Yeah, it also like almost does nothing against Feather. To be fair, Clarion also isn't very good against Feather. And I'm, I'm just going to concede this match. We don't, we don't have good tools for a matchup like this. I think, I think there's a good chance this Angel's archetype is just not competitive. I think there's, there's a reason why you haven't seen it floating around. We've talked, we've talked a lot about how mid-range decks really struggle in this format for a lot of different reasons with all the go-over-the-top threats and you can't really play blue cards efficiently inside the angel shell like i feel like i feel like in order to make the angels deck better against some of the other things in this format you basically just turn into bad esper like you the thing the, the cards that you end up wanting to play just your deck just ends up being bad esper This, this is not a card quality format. The individual power level of your cards doesn't seem to really matter so much as the how many cards do your cards draw? How many how many two for ones are crammed into the top end of your deck? That's the that's the metric that seems to be what you want to cross. Yeah, something more something more aggressive might be okay. The problem with three color aggro decks is your mana ends up being a little bit too tappy a lot of the time. Man, who's got two thumbs and is ready to get spell pierced? This guy right here. Ooh. Oh ho. We're halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. Take my hand. I'll make it. I will make it. I swear. Do 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 do. Wow, they must have just drawn the spell Pierce, right? I guess Pierce wouldn't have countered a shock there, anyways. This is, this is probably a matchup where we're not guaranteed to win, especially with our hand this game, but I feel like we have a lot of play to a matchup like this. We got a lot of good flying blockers. Although this game, we might just get like spell pierced out of it. We do not have any flying blockers in sight currently. Been kind of punished for my decision to bottom the mountain and keep the mobilized district, but impossible to know that we're never gonna draw another land. 
Yeah, the, historically speaking, the Angel decks have been good against these Flyer decks, and Tide Taker is also reasonable to match up like this, I agree. So we're going to play the Shock during my opponent's upkeep, and the reason for this timing is this way if my opponent has like a Negate or a Wizard's Retort, they have to cast that spell on their next turn cycle using up some of their mana. Basically, it doesn't allow them to be efficient with these islands. We're not going to let them spend these three mana. We're going to do it after they've untapped. And we do it during their upkeep rather than after they've drawn because this means they have to already have the counter spell in their hand. They can't draw it for the turn. So basically, we maximize our ability to tie up their mana this way while minimizing their ability to draw extra outs to protect the creature. They are down to one card. Oh, this thing is ready to pop next turn. That's terrifying. Really need to draw a shocker or a lightning strike here. Sounds good, Coast Left. I'm running uh I'm running late this evening. <clears throat> so you might not get an email back till tomorrow afternoon, but you'll definitely get an email back before before Monday. So Gideon's and History of Benalia's are not particularly good here. How do we... I think Bishop's probably fine. This seems good. I brought in the rest of my shocks, a couple of fries, a couple of lava coils, just like max removal. Just like almost every card in our deck is good here, assuming we can cast them, which was part of the issue last game. Also, if you think about the cards we drew last game, we drew mostly cards that we didn't want to be drawing, right? Do I want these Prison Realms? Is this actually better than like the third Chandra and a Bishop. Cause while Chandra's really good if we get to six mana, if we get to six mana a lot of the time, we're probably winning this matchup regardless, right? So I feel like maybe I don't want too many of these. I don't want them to clumped up in my hand either. I think I'd rather just have more slightly cheaper spot removal. Yeah, yeah, sometimes they have Yangling post board. That's a good a good thing to point out too. It's a clean answer to clean answer to her. I think that's a solid suggestion. Hey, hey, well, I appreciate the ad bits, T-Dub. Happy Friday. Not surprised to see the opponent taking a little bit to sideboard here. Our deck. Our deck, like we talked about, Angels hasn't been super popular lately, so our deck is a little bit off meta. It is currently 5 p.m. Cornfield, so um, I guess a good note in general is that the schedule that's posted on my website is a minimum stream schedule. That's kind of like gives people a baseline of like, I always know Jeff is going to be here at these times, but sometimes I run late, depending on, depending on how things are going. And today we've been having a bunch of sweet decks. We had a couple of people cut extra things in, so we're running a little bit late. You are, you are very correct on your time zones though. Brick, 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 brick. That's what I'm talking about. I would like that angel, please. If they brick again next turn, Shalai is probably GG's. Especially with some, some fried chicken back up. Thunk, trigger. Attack for one. Now worth noting, even though Fry says this spell can't be countered, this spell does still get stopped by Dive Down. If you are a fan of uh, Magic's non-rotating formats and you can stomach Magic online, this morning's Modern Leagues were awesome. I think I'm actually gonna tag both of them as favorites and it's been, it's been a while since I've tagged two favorites for Modern. 
Well, both Jeskai Tempo and the four color elemental elemental ball deck were, were just excellent. I should have given this one Vigilance because it has flying. That was a mistake on my part. I was thinking I wanted two three power attackers in case they chump blocked, but I should have made this a five because it it flies. Oh, this is also pro red. Yeah, that's a really big mistake actually. Give them a complete freebie there that I didn't need to give them. That could drag them back into this game. To be fair, it was a jank deck that I got to build. I don't mind I don't mind bad decks on occasion, especially when I'm the one that gets to build them. I think I wanna just play my fry now. Because next turn, next turn I'm going to want to activate Resplendent Angel and attack. What punishes me for this block? How does lifelink interact with protection? So protection prevents damage from being dealt. So you don't lifelink. Now the confusing part, and this is why, this is why, um, this is why, uh, protection is a garbage mechanic, is that if you have a lifelink trample creature and you attack and they block with protection, you gain life equal to the damage you trample over because you are only obligated to assign points of damage to a protection creature that are equal to its toughness. So even though the protection creature is not dying, you only have to assign what would be lethal. Bad block here on my opponent's part. They probably didn't realize Aurelia gave herself trample. And actually it's a bad block that leaves them dead. They are probably dead regardless. Yeah, I don't think so, Radagast. The the green would give you a lot more tapped lands. And I think this deck's already a little bit clunky with how expensive some of its spells are. Yeah, CJ, it's really it's really awkward. It's re it's really awkward. There's a reason why part of the reason why protection was removed from the Magic's design file basically for a long time is not only because it creates feel bad moments, but also because the rules surrounding it are kind of convoluted. Yeah, yeah, Prison Realm being able to take Drake off the table seems like another nod in the direction of we definitely want Prison Realm. Yep, yep, definitely concur on that. This hand is tough. I like that it has my colors. It has a scry land on one. I think I'm gonna keep it because it has tithe taker. Like Lyra is definitely too slow to be our first like really meaningful play, but with the scry land, hopefully we can hit a removal spell of some sort in the middle. And tithe taker is definitely one of our better cards in the matchup for helping ensure that our more expensive cards resolve. Is a decent pickup. Retorted. Yep. If we don't draw anything meaningful to cast next turn, we'll probably just fire off this lava coil on the Siren Storm Tamer. 
Just want to try and, like, keep the board clear so we don't die. Play a tap Sacred Foundry. Two turns off of the Lyra Slams. Would love to draw any two, three, or four mana spell next turn just so we have, like, a meaningful play. Deal. So we technically, technically are losing tempo on these exchanges, but happy to just be spending our mana. So they're going to need counter spells for the next two turns. Specifically creature counter spells. Just spell pierces and dive downs won't work. Negates won't work. All right, if this isn't a uh, counterspell for Lyra, we're in a pretty good spot. Or a Trickster. A trickster kills us. Uh, a trickster actually doesn't kill us because of Bishop. That's sweet. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for him. That's true. Dive down, dive down would have let them kill Lyra. It's a good call. Yeah, I agree. Like, if they had dive down there, I was pot committed, right? Like, a bluff doesn't work if I'm forced to call. And like, I was in a position there where I was forced to call. Thank you for the five month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Don't feel bad about sending the message through. I appreciate the support. It's a big level of a hoodie. Realize that. Yep. Only only make bluffs that they can't afford to call, or when they can when they can afford to not call. Mazah. I feel like we've had, we've only played three matches so far, but I feel like we've had a really good balance kind of demonstrating the polarization of matchups a deck like this is going to have. Between being good against things like mono blue and red aggro, as opposed to just feeling very, very helpless against a ramp strategy. Sure. If you hit two star TB early, he just like picks the game. Queen of Pain's really good too. The, all the all the cheap demon units are powerful. Submarine, a blue submarine, a blue submarine. Do 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 Are they playing some kind of artifact deck? Are they a steel over? Are they a steel overseer deck, chat? I mean, how will we see the other cards they're playing though? If I concede. Don't you, want to see, don't you want to see the other things they're doing? I want to see the other things they're doing. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is blue as a color if it has. It has that if it has blue in the casting cost. It's like, do I play Chandra and start plussing her next turn? Probably. Probably do that for one turn before I start jamming the resplendent angel activation.
Have you have you been through all the things on my website? Yuck. Got a lot of good ones up there. We're gonna add some more this evening. The five the five color Niv deck we played today felt quite good. As far as wacky is concerned. We also played some more aristocrats today, which felt excellent. As long as I don't deck myself, yep. Yep. So if I Chandra spin down, I kill my Tithe Taker, my Angel, but also their Servant, their Thopter, their Karnstruct, right? Because they only have... No, I won't kill the Karnstruct because they have, they have four. So I'm not killing the Karnstruct. That's probably not worth it. I think I'm just supposed to do this then. Gain five, gain four. Yeah, they are a Steel Overseer deck. Brutal. I think I'm minus three in Chandra to kill the Karn. Does that, does that make sense? Like the Overseer has got to go. So like the question is, am I killing the Overseer with a minus one or am I minus three to clean the board up? I feel like I'm supposed to just clean the board up. Like these turn into one ones, these die, these will live. I have to give up my resplendent angel to do that, but I think that's worth it. It makes these much smaller. They're still eight eights. Good golly. All right, then Ursum begins. Oh, she's got vigilance. That's nice. Farewell and thank you for the lesson. Farewell and thank you for the lesson. That's an interesting thought. Maybe the problem is like I'd have to I'd have to double chump block, right? Then I'd lose this. Maybe that's worth it. Maybe that's worth it. Chandra pumping out a couple of emblems here might let us steal this game as it starts to go long if we can continue gaining a little bit of life and putting uh putting tokens into play in front of their in front of their seven sixes. Yeah, yeah, the board definitely had a lot going on. Is this a Johnny returning? 
Is the Johnny returning Steel Overseer to play? Is that really about to happen? We really want this last card to not be a historic card. If we double minus two, Chandra clears the board. Some solutions must be built. That's true, isn't it? Minus three. Yeah, because if I... If I do this, these turn into sixes because this dies. Make some more room to fight in. So now it's Chandra. And I've got a spirit token versus their Johnny and their map and their submarine. And I've got I've got mobilized district left over and I've got Shalai left over. Feels like I'm a little bit ahead here. Definitely could go either way, but feels like I'm a little bit ahead here. The submarine draws a card when it deals damage to a player or planeswalker. District coming in clutch here. <gasps> Oh my gosh! The Bastion technology. I, will I was I was not prepared for the Bastion. Yikes! Yikes! I feel like I feel like we're trying to play checkers and they're playing 4D chess. We're just like not even on the same level. Yeah, opponent's deck seems really sweet. We have played an aggressive artifact deck on stream the other day that seemed a little bit lackluster, and a more a more mid-rangey build seems really awesome. I will make my strength. All right, so if the submersible comes in, uh, it looks like double blocking could be profitable, and then you like galaxy brain and remember that this card's over here still, and you get really sad. I think I'm throwing away my mobilized district. Cause I want her to kill a Johnny. Yeah, I can't, I can't minus five on the chamber century because they're going to crank it to six, right? I am sorry. Let's go. All right, I guess, I guess we just hope they're distracted by this Chandra long enough that the emblems and Shalai can win the game. Like if we, if we draw a Lyra, so they're going to kill Chandra this turn, but if we draw a Lyra next turn, Lyra with these emblems might let us race. Yeah, yeah, the Bastion's letting him flip map this turn. Uh, Lyra doesn't die to Chamber Sentry right away. It's protected by Shalai. And if Chamber Sentry is shooting Lyra, it's then not crewing the Submersible, which gives us a little bit more breathing room that way too. And again, remember, we don't need to answer their board. We just need a little bit of life 
and hit them a little bit so we can get enough get enough time for these awakened inferno emblems to go to work so i think we're pretty far behind here but i do think lyra is like our one shot one last shot it's the chance to roll opportunity comes once in a match time you better lose yourself in the red white angels we're hoping the lira is gonna roll off the top of the deck to shut them down do 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 they they recovered from recovered from the sweeper very nicely what are you going to get for food at the movie theater, Mom? Spaghetti? Exactly. So you understand. You understand. Hey, what's going on, Mulder? All right, down to seven. Uh, this, the down to seven here means that if uh, we draw a burn spell next turn, this does four and these do two. So they're in a virtual five. I got to deal five next turn. That's a blocker. That's a blocker. I will gladly fly and benefit from another that being said, Aurelia gives herself trample because trample is a very red mechanic. As you, as you all know, when you think trample, you think red. Yeah, Ball Lightning, Dreadhorde Arcanist, exactly. This is still game one. It's been a heck of a game. All right, the Submersible is coming across. They are still dead. So they're taking three down to five. So they're dead to Lightning Strike off the top here, of which we have four copies still. We have four copies of Lightning Strike. There's three cards on the bottom. So we have we are we are one in ten to win this game. One in one in ten to win this game. Rats. That's a good game of magic. Let's see what uh, see what our post board can do here. Some Lerva coils seem pretty reasonable. Prison realm seems fine. Chandra seems fine. Shock seems like it doesn't really line up well into what they're doing. I feel like I probably have a hard time bringing Stony Silence, right? I feel like I probably have a hard time protecting Gideon early. You're missing how they had lethal. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. They had a lot of stuff going on. The sub, does this was the sub eight by itself? Yeah, that sounds right. I guess they had to shoot the Aurelia. Maybe I wasn't dead on board. I don't know, I felt dead. I stand by my decision. Do I want fries for killing? Fry kills the submarine too, huh? Yeah, if they shoot Aurelia, they didn't have enough for lethal. Yeah, that's probably true. Probably a little bit of a premature concession on my part. That's fine. We're going to be okay. <sighs> yeah, we might have, might have had one more shot to draw Shock or Lightning Strike there. This hand needs to draw a bunch of lands, but if it draws lands, the spells are pretty good. No, that's not true, Steric. Like, Lightning Strikes and Shocks were still an out the following turn. So if they, if they didn't have us dead, I definitely had, you know, half a dozen outs in my deck. Yeah, but they were taking, they were taking two from the Chandra Emblems every turn. So the two, the two from Dovin doesn't matter. Or the one from Dovin or whatever. Doing doing pretty good in the running off lands department so far. I look, I don't enjoy seeing things suffer, but I'll make an exception to you. Yeah, 
Yeah, Steel, Steel Overseer, he's like a... He's like a priest of the Forgotten Gods level quality card. You gotta kill that one on sight. That's what they're doing. That, that makes a whole lot of sense. That is a, that is a good payoff. Mystic Forge, for those not familiar. Let's see that. Let's you cast through your deck. Very similar to how Experimental Frenzy works without the downside. And it can clear a blank off the top, which is neat. It notably cannot play lands off the top, though. It's a very relevant thing to note. Yep. Treasure map, also very good with Mystic Forge. Mentoring on to mobilize district sounds great. Dunk dunk. Five thirty, eh? Sounds like sounds like leftover Chipotle time to me. can stay right there all right so their board now beats uh aurelia in combat so we're gonna pass yeah the the fridge microwave setup behind me is one of the best things we've done in a long time No, I don't think so. Not with the Chandra in my hand. Like, this Chandra's about to come down and, like, just destroy their world. So I don't think it's worth treating the Aurelia when, like, I've got the Chandra set up to, like, knock everything down next turn. I've never had leftover Chipotle. That is such an American thing to say. Yeah, I don't think we need to remove the side though. We just kill them through the side. We're like, we're just gonna plus plus Chandra here. What's my order at Chipotle? Uh, white rice, no meat, fajita veggies, uh, mild salsa, 
corn salsa, cheese, extra cheese. No, really extra cheese. Guac, put some cheese on top of the guac, please. And you gotta make sure you get the cheese on top of the guac because you don't want the guac to stick to the lid. All right, and we're at 29 here. Mm, if I would have tapped differently, I could have had a mobilized district up here. Probably doesn't matter. Like, even if they manage to survive trampling Aurelia here next turn, like, they're going to be taking two a turn from this Chandra before long. Although I will say this, I'm not sure what it says about me as a person, but I visit Smoothie King often enough that some of the people there know me by name at this point. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. They just watch the stream, yep. I think they meant Chandra's minus X was lights out in the context that it cleared their flying blockers. Let me attack them in the air. I think that's what people meant by it was lights out. Good to, good to articulate though, I agree. I go to the post office so much, they made me sign up for a small business account to save us, even though we're not really a small business. That's funny. It's better than the McDonald's drive through knowing your name. <laughs> Christy, Christy told Declan that we were going to, that she was going to make dinner and he asked her where she was going to go get something from. And I was just like, <laughs> I just, I just lost it. It was so funny. And for people that don't know, Declan is four. So like, it's super funny at that being coming from a four year old. Um, I guess it's probably a mulligan. I guess I have a removal spell in a scry land. Double Aurelia kind of sucks though. Like the first one's not likely to die and the rest of the hand's kind of slow. Yeah, this seems good. I'm going to keep this. Um, Tide Taker's probably fine. History of Benalia seems like it probably gets stonewalled a lot, so let's go ahead and bottom that. Instant regret for bottoming the other history. This is gonna tell you more about me too, but believe it or not, as an American, I like getting extras on things. The person, the person that knows my name was like, they're like, I don't want to just know you as the extra peanut butter guy. What's your, what's your name? <laughs> X 
extra peanut butter, extra cheese, chat. I am an incredibly healthy vegetarian. Yeah, peanut butter and smoothies is great. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strawberry smoothie they make that has peanut butter in it. It's peanut butter and some other stuff in it. I'm sure if you looked on their website, their strawberry peanut butter smoothie would. Has a, has a listing of ingredients. I'm sure it's terrible for me, but I don't want to know, okay? I don't look at calories when I order things. I just order the food I like. Don't judge me, chat. So if we run some, if we run three lands off here, we can start pumping out four fours in a way they probably can't keep up with. Uh, yeah, that's fine, Jace. Uh, I think we're dead here, unfortunately. Maybe maybe if their forge bricks off, we could be okay, but I think we're probabilistically dead here. Yeah, peanut butter's not that un- It's just, it's kind of, it depends on the kind, too. Like, some peanut butters are high in salt, and some of them have added sugar, so it depends on what kind of peanut butter you're eating, too. We have an herbs, man. Yeah, I don't I I definitely wouldn't be able to be a vegetarian if I if I couldn't eat peanut butter. Yeah, I think I think the steel overseer with the Voltaic Servant does it here. Just missed on two lands for too long. Even if we had lands, our opponent's draw was pretty good. Had a lot, a lot going on. As far as Angels is concerned, I feel like we had a pretty good spread of like what this deck's strengths and weaknesses are in those matches there. We like had some matches where we were against aggressive decks that were low to the ground and we were able to like gain our life and like stop stop up the air with our flyers we we're really powerful there but we also had the games against like the mid-range and other decks that generate card advantage that really show where this kind of archetype struggles and i think in that diverse format overall that the standard really is i don't think a deck like this is very good I think if you're mostly playing against aggro and like mono blue, it's fine. But I think overall, this wouldn't be something I would recommend unless you really love casting this suite of angels. Austin TCG Corner, thank you for the seven the seven months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. <laughs> 